Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Welcome back to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. Today, I have the honor of having on somebody who I've recently gotten to know, and that is Natalie Jill, author of The 7-Day Jumpstart and Unprocess Your Diet. She helps people across the globe reach their health and fitness and business goals, and Natalie leveraged the power of the internet and created a globally recognized brand with over 2 million social media followers, leading to an online business that has generated over seven figures in revenue. I can tell you that Natalie is so committed to helping you become the best version of you, whether you're starting out on a fitness journey or whether you are trying to launch a business or grow your business. Natalie is going to give you so many nuggets of information along the way. I cannot wait for you to listen in. Natalie, I am so incredibly excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on. Love being here. Thanks for having me. 
Okay, so I really was excited to have you on because I have to be totally honest. I am I am a little bit obsessed with you. Um <laughs> because you are so inspiring to me. Like um from the moment that you had emailed me and said, "Hey, I'd love to get together just to chat, just to network." I was like, "Are you serious? Why are you emailing me?" And you know what I want people to know about you is that you are truly somebody who is looking out and after the best interests of other people and you pour yourself into them out of sheer you're just passion and generosity out of wanting to help people so your soul is so genuinely beautiful and I just cannot wait for you to share um, some of your journey because I think people are going to be really surprised so I would love for you to take us to a time long before you were you know this fitness icon that everybody looks up to Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for that um, intro. I It's funny to me when someone talks about me that way, because I really just feel like I'm everybody else. I don't feel that I'm anything special and I don't feel that I'm a fitness icon. So I love <laughs> when someone describes me that way, it's, it's, I get a little giggle out of it because <laughs> honestly, I wasn't doing anything with fitness or nutrition or social media or anything a few years ago. I was just a, a new mom who was working in corporate America, who happened to have gained a lot of weight while pregnant and was going through a divorce and a, and a bad time. And that was, mm. that was really who I am. And if someone had said, who are you? Or what do you do? Nothing about fitness would have came out of my mouth at the time. Mm. So I still adjust to being described that way. Well, I love here. So that's, that's something that is like everybody on this podcast. I want them to hear is, you know, you were just going through a divorce at the time you were having some struggles. I know that I I listened to one of your videos on your um, website and I know that we chatted, but you were diagnosed with celiac disease too. And all of these, so all of these rock bottom moments kind of led you to something, but could you explain more about like, what was that rock bottom moment and what made you realize that you either had to move or what made you really decide to start leaping into this? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll take you back years and years ago when I was diagnosed with celiac, which is, it just means it's an autoimmune disorder, which means my body doesn't recognize gluten. And this was before gluten was trendy. No one did gluten-free diets. There wasn't gluten-free bread everywhere. Whole foods didn't have gluten-free food. This is years ago. And I was having some issues with my health and I learned I was what's called a celiac. And that was a journey in itself. Um, That's something I've had for almost 20 years now. I've learned to deal with it. So I had this fascination with healthy foods and knowing what goes into our food because I had to deal with my celiac disease. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that that would play such a pivotal role in my journey later at the time when I was diagnosed. And what I mean by that is after I had my daughter, I was in my late 30s and I had gained a lot of weight when I was pregnant. And I didn't gain a lot of weight because I was just pregnant. I gained a lot of weight because I was in a, having a really rough time in my life and I was depressed and I ate a lot. <laughs> I ate a lot of junk. I mean, I eat fast food and ice cream and French fries and, and junk. And it might've been gluten-free, but it was still junk. And that is really what happened to me when I was pregnant. I gained a lot of weight for the first time in my life. I'm, I'm only five, two. Um, so 50 pounds of pregnancy weight is a lot on me. And and I had actually gained 65 pounds more than I am today. So it was a lot on my 5'2 frame. Mm -hmm. And I was having a rough time in my marriage. Um, The person I had married who was my best friend and I uh, knew that we couldn't stay married. We were going through a rough time. But because I was going to be a new mom and he was a new father, it was really hard for us to figure out what the right thing to do was. And we decided to separate. And this was at the same time where the housing market had crashed, the stock market had crashed. And I was, although I had this good job in corporate America, it was a job where I traveled full time. So I knew that was something I was gonna have to let go of um, to be a new single mom. So I remember thinking back and on that time and just being so completely down and depressed thinking, this is supposed to be the happiest time of my life. I'm, you know, married. I have this nice house. I have a kid on the way and I'm so depressed and I'm so overweight and I just want to fast forward my life. And I remember that's just how I felt right then. So do you think a lot of that was, we talk about this all the time, especially fitness people, but you think a lot of that is because of what you were putting into your body? It was a combination of things. One, it was the stress. 
It was the lack of motivation from being so down and figuring what's the point of working out. I, I just didn't care anymore. It was feeling defeated and it was eating junk. And the more junk I ate, the more processed food specifically, the lower my energy got, um, the hungrier I became, the more cranky I became. You know, it, it, a lot of things were playing playing a role. And I just felt really sad and rock bottom. And in hindsight, I probably should have gone to therapy and gotten help and I didn't. Um, I just stayed with that depression. And I remember the only thing that got me through those days was knowing I was a new mom mm -hmm. and I had to just stay there for my daughter. Mm -hmm. But I was really thoroughly depressed at the time. So what was the moment for you? Cause you're in that position. What was the moment where you're like, wow, I either need to take action or, and what was the first step? Cause I know so many people that are listening are at that point. They're at that rock bottom point. Maybe they cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like where did you have to go mentally in order to start finding sure. that energy or whatever it was? I had to get fed up and I was just really fed up of feeling that way and feeling out of control. And it really boiled down to just the decision one day. And I just made this decision that it couldn't get worse. And I had to fix this. I didn't know how I was going to fix it, but I knew I had to fix it. And I had to make a decision that it was possible. And that took everything in me just to decide that, that there was even a possibility for me to fix it and, and not feel this way anymore. And what I know for sure now, and I, and I did know then, was that you can't change unless you have a feeling of a good feeling towards something. Like you can't you can't change and lose weight unless you know what that would feel like to lose weight. Or you can't be in a good relationship unless you know what that might feel like to be in a good relationship. So I knew I had to somehow bring that feeling into my life. And what I did was I started with a simple vision board. I literally just sat down one day when my daughter was taking a nap and I, without editing, cut pictures out of magazines of whatever appealed to me. And that was fit looking females. It was a happy relationship. It was, you know, a peaceful home environment. It was money. It was anything that made me feel better that would draw a, a thought of hope into me. And I made a vision board. That was literally my very first step. Oh my gosh. I love that. Cause I did something similar to that too. And I think it's important for people to know, like, what do you do when you look at the vision board? Cause people make vision boards all day long. Right. And they like put them in, the, in a corner or something, but what do you do to make that vision board work? <laughs> Well, you, I can tell you for sure, you can't just make a vision board and do nothing because like, that won't happen. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not magic. It's not like this hokey poke, hocus pocus, you know, there you made a vision board. It happens. What you have to do is look at it so you can drum up those feelings every day and you have to take action towards them. Oh my God. Love every it. little action you take in the right direction is a step in the right direction. I mean, it's just no matter how small it is. So for me, looking at that vision board every day and having it front and center to look at reminded me of how I wanted to feel. And then it made it a lot easier to take steps forward. So for instance, if I'm looking at a fit looking female, it made it a lot easier for me to think, you know what, I should go walk today or I should make better choices today because I was working towards that feeling instead of looking at just myself and being disappointed with myself, I was able to look at something I was trying to work towards. Oh my God, what you just, so you guys listen to this, what she said was, is gold is because it's about, she would look at it and literally get that feeling inside because I, you know, I believe that when you feel something, we're then attracting more like feelings because we know, you know, when you feel like crap, what happens? You go to the next crappier thought. So yeah. it's like, you feel good. You actually bridge that and you go to an, the next better thought. So, you know, starting out in the morning, looking at your vision board, which I'm, I'm sure that you did. And I love hearing about that. So what are, what are some of the things, because I think people think like, okay, you did the vision board, you did, um, you know, whatever it was to start changing your life, but small steps, what were some of the next? small steps that you took so that sure. you maybe wouldn't get overwhelmed? So I knew that nutrition and working out was going to have to play some kind of role. Um, and I knew looking at my vision board, I felt more encouraged and determined. However, I fell into what everybody and so many people listen to listening right now probably relate to is that information overload. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? Like, do I do this diet? Do I do that? Do I have to have this program? Do I, do? I, I was so confused and I'm somebody who I consider pretty intelligent and I was confused. <laughs> so <laughs> I, um, I jumped into the information overload and I thought, I'm going to understand this. I'm going to get my training certification. I'm going to get my nutrition certifications. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to try it on myself. And if I just keep moving towards this every day, it's got to work. It's got to work. So that's exactly what I did. I started digging into the information overload. 
I started changing my diet and my working out. And I use the whole idea of addition, not subtraction. I refused to tell myself I had to take things out of my life because I knew that would set me up for failure. Instead, I thought, what can I add every single day that's going to make me get closer to these goals? For example, could I drink more water? Could I eat more vegetables? Could I eat more lean protein? Could I eat more healthy fats? Could I walk more? And I felt if I could add more of the good, it made a lot less room for the bad. And that's literally how I started. Wow. I've never actually heard it put that way. I love that because instead of thinking, what am I going to take away from myself? It's just, what could I add to my, that is brilliant. I love it. If you eat a pound of vegetables, you have a lot less room for, you know, Hershey. <laughs> just the way it is. It's so true. That's why I start a lot of my meals with a ton of vegetables. Then I'm like, okay, I'm not going to eat that, you know, that many carbs or whatnot. So, oh my gosh. Okay. So if somebody is just is just starting out right now. And you know, you're saying add certain things a day. Do you really, is it really as easy as just starting with add more water, add more vegetables? Like how do I know I'm starting to progress? What are some recommendations? So there's a lot there, but you have to, you have to detach yourself from the scale for a little while and you have to stay focused on your feelings. So your vision board, your feelings and getting back in touch with your body. And, you know, in my book that's coming out that we're going to talk about a little bit later, but unprocess your diet, that's my whole thought behind it is when you're unprocessing and eating real natural good for you foods and you're adding more you start to get more in touch with your cravings and what you really need versus just your your thinking you want out of boredom so when you're eating good nutritious and and laura you know this too from experience when you're eating in a healthy way your body craves less of the bad it just does so you start increasing your energy you start feeling better more motivated more encouraged you're less bloated you're you start feeling better and those little tiny changes encourage you to keep doing more Mm, that is, that's awesome. So why don't we talk about that? I really want to chat about your book because I know that you've had all of these experiences along the way because you want to share where you came from for those people who are maybe at rock bottom and you know, rock bottom is a great place that you are now cracked open as they always say. So what inspired the book and what really is the reader going to get out of your book? So when I was in my rock bottom and coming out of it, um, I did not have a Facebook following and I turned to Facebook to share my misery. (laughs) (laughs) I had, you know, my hundred high school friends at the time and I wanted some accountability. So I was taking pictures of what I was eating. I was sharing what I was doing and it drew interest and people would ask me, that's interesting what you're eating. You know, what's in that? So I had requests from my little tiny Facebook community to make a little cookbook. I didn't know anything about making a cookbook. I didn't know anything about making an ebook. And I had to literally Google like what's an ebook. And I sat down one weekend and I made an ebook out of my little Blackberry phone pictures of the food I'd been posting called what I eat. And that was a very first product that I, I wasn't trying to launch a business. It was something I was asked to do. And I was selling a few of them and, you know, $12 here, $12 there. It was literally how Natalie Jill fitness came about. And the more that people that were buying my recipes, the more that were liking them. And everyone started asking me if I would put it together in a plan for them. Well, I sat down one weekend and I wrote what's now my seven day jumpstart. I literally in one weekend wrote it. Um, I don't think anyone edited it. My graphics were laughable. (laughs) It probably had spelling errors, but I wrote out exactly what I just went over with you. You know, how I made a vision board, how I decided how I did addition versus subtraction, the types of foods I put together. I wrote it out and I called it the seven day jumpstart. Well, something really magical happened because people started buying this plan and not only did they buy it, they had results from it. So where I started with this hundred, you know, Facebook followers, all of a sudden I was getting more and more friend requests. They were buying the program and they were emailing me saying, oh my gosh, I feel so amazing. Thanks for sharing this. And I think a big reason they felt amazing is they could relate to me first. Mm -hmm. They were open to what I was sharing and I had dug through the information overload for them. Mm -hmm. So I would share how they're feeling and it just started spreading like wildfire. The more people that had results, the more people knew about it, the more my Facebook grew, the more this product took off. And it's crazy because my Facebook page alone today has, my gosh, 1.5 million followers. And it literally started just from those few friends and me sharing what I was doing from an authentic place. So this book, this original seven day jumpstart helped transform the lives of so many people that 
when I wanted to take it to a next level and reach more people, the next step was to go through a traditional publisher and make this a more advanced hard copy book so I could get it out to more and more people that could be in that same spot I was in before. So what is it called? Where can we, where can we find it? When does it come out? So it's, it's, you can pre-order it now. It's Natalie Jill's seven day jumpstart unprocess your diet. You can pre-order it now um, at, on anywhere, really Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, but if you go to natalijillfitness.com forward slash book, I've listed out all kinds of bonuses people can get for pre-ordering, but it'll be in stores on May 3rd. But um, we already have uh, lots of pre-orders coming in because of the bonus, which I'm super excited about. Mm, you want to tell me about the bonus? Oh, well, we, <laughs> I have another program. I love doing video academies and I had filmed one called Simplified that I was working on to launch in June. And it's basically an academy to help people simplify their diet and their life. And it's video modules where they're accountable to me. And we were going to price it at about a hundred dollars. And we decided that anyone that pre-orders my book, even though it's only $18, we're giving that entirely for free right now. Oh my God. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, so we're about that. you know, Natalie, what I love that you just shared is, and this is so vital for people to be on, but what I picked up from everything that you just shared is you were starting your journey. You didn't wait to be perfect. You literally just started saying, I want to be accountable. You created accountability for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so many people are like, Oh, what do I do? Or I don't know how to stick to this. It's like, well, what, what's going to make you stick to it? And then you started authentically sharing that word encompasses you because you truly share what is working for you and what you're going through in the moment. The second it comes out, it's like, you know, we, we got to spend some time together and it's like the second you have a thought it's out, it is out there. <laughs> to everyone. You're like, this is what I'm thinking. This is what's going to work. Here it is. And it's real. It's in the moment. It's raw. And that's why people want to see it. It's not edited. It's not like you sat down and you were like, I'm going to wait till it's perfect. And so that's what I want people to grab from you is that they are attracted to you because you are sharing the now, the right now, the what's happening right now. So, you know, I think people are all waiting to be, be perfect. So what would you tell them? How do they know when they're ready? That's such a great question. It's so my business and my life did not start to be at its fullest until I was truly authentic. And when, when I define the word authentic, it's just when in doubt, just tell the truth is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. You can never go wrong. Just speaking the truth and telling the truth. As soon as you try to become anything other than that, there's that's not authentic and it doesn't work. And I, you can say that in business and nutrition and anything. If I'm starting a business and I'm trying to create a business plan or be something I've seen as successful, that is not what's going to work for me because that's not authentic to me. But when you're just really yourself, you're going to attract people to you for the right reasons and you're going to attract more like-minded people. And that's really what helps us grow and become, become our best. So I just say, when in doubt, you know, tell the truth and authenticity really is what works. You know, I don't, there's nothing I hold back. I told you when we started this interview, you can ask me anything. I really, there's no shame on anything. I don't hide my age. I don't hide what I've been through. I don't hide anything because I really feel that does a disservice to people. Um, I just think when in doubt, tell the truth, share the truth. There's a difference between sharing and being a victim mentality and then sharing to help others and empower others. And you know, you know, we've all run into somebody and you say, Hey, how are you doing? And they're like, well, my dog died and my boyfriend left me. And you're kind of like, Oh geez, why'd I ask? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then there's the people you meet and you're like, you look great. What do you, how's it going? And they're like, Oh, thank you. You know, I just, I came out through a rough time with my job, but, and then they, you know, they give you the, the but and the excitement. Mm -hmm. And those are the people we love and we can relate to, mm -hmm. but no one can relate to perfection. We can see through it. It's just not there. It's not true. And we tend to hate on perfect people or people. And, you know, I always get a kick out of a lot of fitness models that complain about haters or negative. And I, and I look at their social media and I'm thinking, well, geez, you've got a Photoshop picture of yourself in a thong with, <laughs> with like, and you're wondering why you have haters. Well, mm. think of that woman sitting there with 30 pounds to lose, you know, mm. looking at you, how does she feel? Mm. So, you know, just be real with people and it's amazing things come from that. Love that. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, okay. So, you know, when we were together, we chatted a lot about, um, you know, we talked a lot about just business and sharing and being abundant because we have a lot of 
girlfriends and friends who were all doing the same thing. And I really want to touch on this because I think there's so many people that listen and look up to you as a mentor and maybe they feel like, well, this is already being done. What does my journey have anything to do with it? How am I ever going to be that way? You know, they look at the, the end picture and I want to talk about our conversation just when we were talking about being abundant and how this Mm -hmm. message, there could not be enough of us in sharing, you know, just where you're at and how your story really helps people, um, you know, because we're not going to be able to touch those same people that maybe the listeners are going to be able to reach. So what, you know, when, when someone's comparing themselves to you, what would you say, like, where do they start if they think this is something they want to do or share their journey or share their experience? You know, everybody has things unique about them. And my and my advice is to not worry about what else is being done out there or who else you think is doing what. And just share more of your best you. You know, just be more of your best you. I have, you know, I, I keep a list on my phone of names of women, especially that when I'm around them, I feel empowered, encouraged, creative, motivated, you know, and then I have the list that doesn't go on my phone of the people that you're around that make you feel negative or down or, you know, you know, those people. And I, I kick them off my bus. Mm-hmm. I like to collect people daily that are the other things that are the encouraging, motivated. And I look for those people, just like when I reach out to you, I look for those people in my life. And sometimes friends will say to me, well, doesn't that, isn't that strange that you have all these friends that do what you do or, and I've never honestly looked at it that way. I've never thought, oh my gosh, me becoming friends with Lori, we compete with each other. It, it doesn't even cross my mind. <laughs> to me, I we make each other a better people by having each other in our lives. So I get rid of that whole competition thing. I don't look at anybody like that. And I don't like people that do. I don't want them in my life. If somebody is very close vested and selfish like that or concerned about that. I really, I don't like those people. I I just give authentically and I hope that the people in my life do the same and it all works out. Mm, And it does. I, I literally just see the people around you and, and I have to say there is such a secret with successful women. That's not a secret anymore. And it's truly that we understand that when we lock arms with other, other abundant, successful women, it's like, there is nowhere to go but up and not just that we have fun like so much fun and sharing ideas and your idea your good ideas just expand because you're able to add even better perspective in so if there is a woman out there that scares you go (laughs) and ask her to do something or if there's anyone with the same ideas right because how much fun did all of us have when we were at your house she invited um, a ton of us over to her home who kind of all do the same thing and I'm telling you if we would have had like a few days together I can't even imagine what (laughs) what would come out of that I mean I most of my friends we could say we competed with each other, but it doesn't work that way. I mean, if there's not some like small, there's not some one sum of clients or money or whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, many people that have bought my programs will, I hope buy yours too, or other people have done collabs with, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I think that competition, I I hate competing in general. I hate all of it. Um, But I, I feel like that is such a negative thing it does not empower people instead look for like-minded people and help each other become even better oh I love that it's really an abundant mindset because when you are abundant and you believe there's enough there will always be enough you will be abundantly blessed so um yeah that is that is why you are abundantly blessed is because you truly are you you live that so I want to take it to um you know I know that I deal with this all the time and I really want to make sure that everybody understands that there is no destination there is no like oh I I'm Natalie Jill. I have this great business and all of this following now and everything is perfect. Like I want to take it to the days where you're not feeling it or how do you, you know, inspiration is a habit. What does that look like on days that you just are not feeling it? What do you say to yourself? What do you do? What do you have in place so that you're successful for the day? That's a great question. I will say, you know, like anyone, I'm certainly not perfect. And I definitely have my, my moods and my days where I'm not as motivated as others, but um, a big thing is I own it. And I, because I feel like I'm very authentic with my following, I don't feel like I have to hide it or I'm fake or any of that. So, um, and I, I think of a smart businesswoman as, as where I'm not jumping up every day going, what do I post on social media today? I really plan out my stuff. Like I know exactly what's going on my social media months in advance. I record content and chunks together. So I map things out that way. It's not subjective to my mood daily, or, you know, I don't have to worry about that as much. 
Um, as far as my own life and setbacks, they happen all the time. I had a surgery this last uh, week that couldn't be avoided. I literally cannot work out for two months right now, which sucks. It's right in the middle of my book launch, but it's, I look for the positive. Okay. That's the time that I can heal. That's the time I can work on these things. I've already done content. So it's just changing my mindset and not beating myself up on something I can't do. And instead looking at, you know, what's the opportunity in this. Okay. That is beautiful. Um, completely normal to not, I mean, there's no way anybody wakes up every single day, like the energizer bunny ready to go. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> it's so true. Like people are like, are you always happy? I'm like, no. Oh my God. Like, let me tell you about this morning. <laughs> it's just, I know we know what things to do. And I, I want to point that out. You said how much you plan. When did you start understanding? Like, because for me, I'm, I'm kind of in that space right now where I'm like, wow, I really, I mean, everything has to be planned out. I'm learning literally, or it does not happen. So where was that point? Like that you knew you had to start planning and how did you get on a schedule of planning? Um, I think it was an intervention from my friend, Shalene Johnson. For sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, your stress success to no end. And she like, literally to, I can give her so much credit for teaching me how to back up off of that. And I really learned through her that I used to be this big, proud multitasker. Like, you know, you do a million things at one time. And I really learned from her that you cannot possibly be that good and productive when you're multitasking. Mm -hmm. So I learned to back it way off, do a lot less and focus a lot more on those things. And I really look at everything that comes across my plate now is, can I give this the full focus attention right now? Yes, if I can, I do it. If I can't, I find a designated time that I can or I scrap it. Mm -hmm. And when I find a designated time that I can, it's to complete the process. So for instance, let's say I have an idea that I want to create an academy on some topic. Mm -hmm. I will literally take an hour or two to write out what's going to happen for that. Then I'll block out the dates on my calendar of when all that's going to happen. I'll put, I'll, I'll backtrack it out. So it's all really organized and scheduled in. So like, if I know I'm launching an Academy in the spring, actually like I am with the June one, I blocked days off a few months ago where I had a full day where I wrote out what was going to be in it. I had three days for filming. I had the people that were going to be editing it, you know, on alert. I had a graphic artist. I, I really planned through it. So that way I'm not scrambling in June for this. It's everything was really planned out. Same with, um, you know, out with my surgery, I don't miss a beat on my social media workout clips I post every day because I have a system where once a month I record 30 clips at a time, mm -hmm. put them in Dropbox, label them, add captions. So one day of filming a month and one day of caption writing, you know, gives me enough content for one to two months. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, taking a step back and figuring out how can you, how are you spending your time now and how can you take those things and and make them better in your schedule? How can you multiply your time with it instead of, you know, always feeling stressed and having to manage your time? Mm, so you really feel like you have more free time now than before? I have more, very, I have much more organized time. Um, for instance, those who will be surprised, um, people will say like, do you work all day long? And I definitely don't. I have about three or four hours a day. That's my focus time. That is it. And I know my most productive time. And I know every day what I'm doing during that time. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I'm not checking emails during that time. I'm not returning phone calls during that time. That is my focus time for things that move me forward in our business. Mm. I, okay. That is like vital because I think people look and they're like, Oh my God, you must be so busy. How do you do it? And I don't want people to sit here and think that we are all working like 12, 14, 16 hour days because that will make them never, ever start. So exactly. for me, I know that I'm, I'm a creative. It burns hot and fast. Like I work really well in like 45 minute sprints. So how do you, is there, how do you figure that out? Was there a way that you figured out when you work best or, or do you build your schedule around like what days that you know, you're going to have more energy? How did you do that? Well, you have to, you have to first assess, like, when do you have the most energy and focus for work? Every, everybody knows that on their own. Like some people it's the middle of the night. Some people it's first thing in the morning. I knew my sweet spot was like from, from basically like 10 to two is my best focus. Mm -hmm. So I knew from 10 to two, I need to do anything that's super important. So even like an interview would be during then, cause that helps with future business. Mm -hmm. Um, my writing is then my filming is then anything that's like super critical to moving our business forward is during that time. Everything else has blocks. It's just not during then. Like I don't consider email as nearly as important as my filming. Mm -hmm. So I, instead of checking emails on my phone throughout the day, I don't have them on my phone at all. I have them on my computer and I designate a time outside of that 10 to two that I'm going to check emails and respond to them. 
and I just do one that one task. Like I'm just doing emails right now. And it's just, it was just playing with that to really realize that that would help me. And I know um, that it's almost impossible to have full focus for more than that amount of time a day. I mean, it's, you can't focus for more than four hours a day. It's just, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's you, you can't. So if you're spending eight or nine hours working on something, I wonder how much more productive you'd be in less time if you could really focus on those things. That is so true. My husband always says to me, like, whichever box you choose, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour or four hours, you're going to fill it with that same one task. So <laughs> I complete so things. like I'm a big completer of things. Like I don't, if I look at an email and I can answer it quickly, I do. If not, it's like, I'm going to figure out exactly when it's going to com be completed. Who else could complete this? It's like, I can, I completely finish it though. I don't just put it in a folder. You know what I just learned from you though, is you you complete them because you're, el you eliminate distractions during that time. Yes. Yes. So uh, that is so huge because you just really inspired me to want to pull my emails off my phone. Cause, oh, yeah. cause I do, I feel it wastes time. It wastes like how many seconds does it take just to pull your email up when you can, you know, when you lose focus. Lori is the best thing I ever did. I took them off my phone. I added a, a brand new personal super secret email that no one would know except for my family and my assistant. She, my assistant knows if it's urgent, she could text me to my person, send it to my personal. Otherwise I don't look at emails unless I check them a couple times a week during that time. Oh my gosh. I love that. So that's something that when, when people are on here, I just want them to really realize that it's what, what takes priority because when we think other people's schedule, you know, other people email you, other people inbox you. And when, at first, when I first started um, a business, I was like, this is so important. This takes priority. Well, if that takes priority, yours, well, your programs, your creations, your willpower, all of those things, they take the back seat. So it's okay. like you're never moving forward. So do you have a mentor? And what are your tips around people who, if they're just starting out, maybe um, let's, let's talk about even just with starting a business. What are some of the things, like the first steps that people should do? So the first step is you should find mentors, but I don't mean call somebody and say, Hey, will you be my mentor? Cause there's nothing more annoying than that. Like, <laughs> it's super annoying. You can find mentors just by being a supporter and learning their stuff. So for instance, Shalene is my friend and I have, she is definitely a mentor to me, but you know, I started as a student with her and I suggest that to people. Like if, you, if there's somebody you learn from, people leave trails with what they've learned. Like there's not one person you admire that you cannot find trails of how they got there online, buy their programs, listen to their videos, look at their stuff. I'll tell you, if somebody emails me and says, can I pick your brain over coffee? Like they're not getting a response. I, that's so, so annoying to me. Like, why what, do I want to help you? Like, I don't, but somebody tells me they've done all my programs. They've watched all my videos and they made these amazing changes to their life or their business because of it. I want to like give them my personal phone number and be their best friend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how can I help you more? It, there's a big difference. So be a student of people first. Um, listen, there's, there's so many resources out there. There's podcasts, there's webinars, there's blogs, there's articles, there's just so much material for free. Be a student of people, buy their programs and support them, learn from them first. And then if you really want to get to them, figure out a way you can add value to their life first. Mm -hmm. And then they, it usually circles back the other way. Oh my gosh. So true. When I totally, when I look for a mentor, it's like, I will read their book. I'll do all their stuff. And then maybe if there's some questions left over, but they really do like Natalie, I watch you pour your best stuff, the same stuff that you would sit with somebody, um, you know, and, and even maybe charge your programs for you give a lot of that away for free. Yeah. So then if you want more, you know, you can sign up for that program, but truly, you know, you do what you do because you want to give your best stuff to everyone. So yes. that could not be more true. It's like, okay, why would I take time to sit down with you right now when you haven't looked at the things that I've given away that are perfectly in this example for you to follow. So and, yeah, you guys follow it her really style. It has nothing to do with the money aspect. Mm -hmm. People think it does. It has nothing to do with that. It just shows that they, they invested in me first. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really, it's that. And I know that they're committed and I'll tell you like some of my the people I've helped the most were my first transformations mm -hmm. because they had such amazing transformations. Um, I, one girl comes to mind all the time. My friend, Rachel Mazur from clean food crush. I just love her. She I had purchased my seven day jumpstart years ago. I didn't know her. She sent me a transformation. I asked if I could share it. She, because of me sharing it, got like 200 or 300 new Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, people requested her recipes. She ended up launching an entire business called Clean Food Crush. She does amazing. She, till this day, gives me credit for helping her with her transformation. Like, I never asked for that. She's just amazing. And, you know, she has a successful, thriving business. And I continue to help her and shout her out and share her stuff because she helped me too. It, it's mm -hmm. just, a, it's like a really cool 
way that that works. So, you know, invest in people and don't like reach out asking for, to have coffee with people. Don't like ask for their programs for free. Like it doesn't, that does not make us want to support you. Yeah, it's totally doing, it, it's an equal energy exchange, right? And I think we, if you look at that, like with everybody or everything in life, every relationship, I always look at that in friendships. I look at that in business, like equally matching what they're giving, meeting somebody halfway, right? That That's kind of what I'm hearing is like, if you meet me halfway, I'm going to invest in you. Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. Sure. Okay, so if you are, if I'm just literally starting out first on my journey, what are some of the things that you would say to somebody? Like if I am really dealing, well, you, I know that you always say be the, being the best them, becoming the best them, where's the mind space that you would suggest that people go, or what are some of the first steps? If I have a lot of trouble overcoming maybe a story or feeling like I'm worthy of this goal or, or seeing it, then I would say just start you're not, you can't fix all that. You can't get rid of it. Just start, just do something while you're being miserable about your thoughts, you're feeling, go for a walk <laughs> or drink some water. Just start because mm -hmm. you can be depressed while you're on a walk too, or you could be depressed while you're eating vegetables too. Just start because if you just start taking those steps in the right direction they add up over time, they do. Yes. Oh my gosh. Start before you're ready for sure. That is, that's huge. Is it's just, I think people are waiting to be anointed or waiting to waiting for someone to tell them that they're good enough. And she'll tell you right now, you're, you're good enough. Let's do it. You, you need to just move start. forward. So, okay. So I'm going to ask you a few quick questions here because, well, first of all, I just want to see if there's any last um, bit of information that you want to share with anyone about your book or, and do you have anything uh, coming up? I know that sometimes you throw some or have some academies. Oh my gosh. My book is like my biggest end all be all <laughs> you have to sell this book. So, um, I would say, no, I mean, the, we were just talking about mentors and how you can get to somebody. If I've, if you found anything I said valuable or anything I've ever shared on social valuable, the biggest thing you can give me is purchasing my book. It's only $18 and mm -hmm. it just, it helps me. It helps me get my information out to more people and it helps me feel complete with a goal that I set for myself too. So, um, it's like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. I give you um, the, the free bonus and I will love people to pieces. So until my book is fully um, launched, um, other than my academy I have coming in June, that is it. I've uh, We talked about focus earlier. I've not added anything else to my plate because I did not want to get distracted from my whole mission with this book. Mm, and I know it's going to be amazing, you guys. So, and Natalie is the epitome of um, giving out the best information that will absolutely get you to where you want to go. If you follow it, if you're committed to it. And, and that's why literally Natalie, I'm like, you are so committed every day to getting out content that will reach people. And I just want people to know what sort of life and person that takes to do that every day. So honestly, if you are looking for transformation, I mean, I'm a huge consumer, so I'm like, where else can I get more inspired, get more, you know, get more, um, information and how can I learn more and she's you have to follow her if you're not and absolutely go grab her book because it's just something that you'll want to gift to other people as well um so a few last questions mm -hmm. so real fast what's your favorite comfort food because this oh is important God, I, there's everything I okay I'm gonna say pizza but it has to be gluten-free pizza I guess so oh my gosh or I would say potato chips and sour cream it's not good for you but it is so good so, <laughs> another one Reese's Pieces obsessed I, yes. I know all of them are terrible. I'm not recommending eating any of them, but yes, <laughs> if I'm PMSing, watch out. That's what I want. <laughs> Is the pizza, do you have a gluten-free pizza in your cookbook at all? You know what? I do. I have a pizza pie in there, but I have, um, I will literally just buy, there's so many good gluten-free brands you can buy. They're not good for you. They just, it's what I want and I get them. Yes. <laughs> so, Word. So, <laughs> those three things. Okay. What is your perfect it's the container of the sour cream, by the way? So it's just, you're making me starving. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> what is your perfect day? I know it can always be different, but perfect day. If you could just wake up tomorrow and have everything exactly as you wanted. Perfect day would be, um, waking up without stress, which I've really worked hard to do. So I'll listen to a podcast first. I'll have my coffee have a nice slow breakfast, hang out with my daughter and my husband, have a great workout, go for probably a long walk, maybe work for a couple hours, um, stress-free, get things done, feel accomplished, and then end the day with probably something active again or, or another walk or a bike ride and um, just winding down at home. I'm like, my house is built for like 
relaxation, like I have massage chairs and a sauna and I'm really into that stuff. So I love when I can just end my day with all of that stuff. Mm. So like exactly like how you, how you basically live your life, you've really set it up in that way. I love, love, love. And when I ask a lot of people who are, um, have their own business, a lot of times it's kind of what they're doing. They have work mixed in, they, you know, they live exactly as they are. So I love yes. hearing that because you can create it because obviously you told us where you came from. So it is very, very possible. And Natalie, you know what? I just want to share really quick. You said that you didn't even do fitness stuff until you were 39 years old. Like okay. that is so inspiring. Can I ask you how old you are now? Because literally... We're Go ahead. 44. Uh, yeah. And like, I look at you and I'm like, for real, you are just the, gr uh -huh. it's just so inspiring to everybody because you, um, act and look like you're 29. So there you go. You can create whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, okay. Very last question. You have a quick elevator ride, literally like one minute to share with someone. And they ask you, um, they say, what are the keys to, to getting and staying happy? Oh my gosh. Um, it's, it, I would say it's who you put on your bus. Like mm. I don't let anyone in my life that isn't, doesn't make me feel my best. I just don't. And I, I literally listen to my intuition so strong on that. And if I can't even explain it sometimes, but if someone doesn't make me feel that way, I kick them out of my life. <laughs> I just do. It's not a conversation. They're just, their phone calls don't get returned. Mm. That's just how I have to operate. And honestly, I would want somebody to do the same to me. If someone ever felt that way about me, I don't think I should be in their life. Mm. It's, you know, we, life's too short. You got to keep, leave space for the ones that uplift you. Mm. Natalie, thank you so much for being on. I know people are just going to absolutely love this podcast. So you guys, if you loved this podcast, please, please, please share it. Um, share it with somebody who you know needs it. And thank you again, Natalie, for being on. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Well, until next time, you guys go and earn your happy and make sure that you share this with someone you love. And I will see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest thought, an honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about, or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our lives life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori.
Hey, I know if you're listening to this podcast that you have big dreams and big goals. And one of the things that can really stop you is struggling with your marketing. Trust me, I have been there. Are you using 10 different systems just to build your online business? Then I want you to try Kajabi. Kajabi helps you build your web pages, set up funnels, and sell your courses, content, coaching, or communities. You've been hearing me talk a lot about funnels on this podcast and the importance of your email list. You can get a free trial at kajabi.com. That's K-A-J-A-B-I.com. I've talked about Kajabi before, but here's something that's super cool and new. They just rolled out an AI assistant for creating your online course curriculum. And this means you just type in a topic that you wanna create on a course or webinar and bam, it's just generates a sample outline for you. It takes a ton of the hard work away. Of course, you're gonna customize it to be your own, but this really helps you get over the struggle of how in the world to start which is where most people stop. If you're like me, starting is always the hardest part and that's what makes Kajabi so popular. They've made it easier for creators to build web pages, build courses, build coaching programs, build membership sites, build checkout pages and build email funnels. So if you're struggling with any of those, you gotta go check it out. Go to kajabi.com. Kajabi was really the first all-in-one system and is trusted by over 100,000 creators. I think that's good enough for me. Also as influencers and marketers who use this. And now their smart AI platform makes it easy to take what you know and turn it into an online course and business. Go start building with a free trial at kajabi.com. That's K-A-J-A-B-I.com. Hey, all I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton. And it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it.